So hello everyone and welcome back to this next lecture in the DC to DC converter series and this is where we had left off in the previous class where we had set up the DC to DC converter. Just go quickly over this. This was a voltage source. It was basically a DC voltage source that's connected through a switch to a transformer. We were using the same two winding transformer as with the basic transformer case and the output of the transformer is connected to, to a simple resistor load, right? And we had run the simulation and we had seen this basic result, right? So we will continue from here. This is where we had left off. Now, before I continue, as always, a little bit of brief background that if you are interested in these kind of video lectures, but you would like something a little more comprehensive, I do have a full length course actually several full length courses on the MOOC website Udemy. The very first course which I have is called Simulating Power Electronic Circuits Using Python. And in that we talk about the basics of Python Power Electronics, how to install the software that is both Python and Python Power Electronics, some basics of electrical engineering and power electronics, and finally a case study of how to simulate a buck converter. The second course is called Basics of Digital Signal Processing for Power Engineers. And in this I talk about signal processing applied for to power electronics. So I have a little bit of basic background of signal processing. Finally, a little bit of actual description of Python packages that can be used for signal processing. And finally, a case study of how to design a low pass filter and a notch filter using frequency response characteristics with Python packages. The latest course which I have is called simulation of magnetics for power electronics using Python. And in this I talk about the, how magnetism can be applied in power electronics and how we can simulate an inductor, coupled inductor and transformers in, power, in Python power electronics for power electronics applications. And finally, there is a case study how to simulate a flyback converter. So if you're interested in full length courses, the links for these courses is provided in the description for this video. So please do check it out. So with this, let me get back to the actual lecture. Now, before I continue, I'll make a small change and that change is going to be that until now, we were simulating our system at 10,000 Hertz. So basically we have the transformer is rated at 10,000 Hertz and we have the gate signal, which had a switching frequency of 10,000 Hertz, right? So like, for example, like this, I put a comment here saying switching frequency. Actually, it's already above, no need to do it again. So this is the switching frequency. So which means that this transformer and the entire converter is operating at 10,000 Hertz. Now, for a flyback converter or for that matter, any DC to DC converter, 10,000 Hertz is not a very large frequency, right? It is not very uncommon to run a DC to DC converter even at 50,000 Hertz, 50 kilohertz, or even for that matter, 100 kilohertz. Matter of fact, there are specialized DC to DC converters that can operate at several hundred kilohertz, right? So this 10,000 Hertz is not a large frequency, right? The reason why I chose 10,000 Hertz is because if I choose something smaller, then in that case, I would need to simulate a much, much smaller time step in my, in my simulation, as well as adjust the simulation parameters, right? So if I come back here and I check my simulation pattern, it is one e raised to minus n, there is one nanosecond. Now, as I said, decreasing the integration time step will prolong your simulation. It will take longer for your simulation to run and longer to get the results, right? That's, now if you do want to simulate something like a 50,000 kilohertz, 50,000 hertz converter, you would need to decrease this time step accordingly, right? That's how it is. But even besides that, you would still be able to simulate. There's not a problem. Now, for these lectures, right, and only for these lectures, I'm going to make an approximation. I'm going to decrease this to 1000 Hertz, right? And the reason for that is I just want to run these simulations a little faster, right? This is just for the convenience of making these videos because as time goes on and as we start simulating more complex systems, these simulations will run for a long time, which will make me pause the video and 
break the videos a little longer so i just want to avoid that by decreasing this frequency this is not recommended in real in real cases 1000 hertz is too low a frequency for an isolated dc to dc converter the benefits of using high frequency trans high frequency dc to dc converters is lost if you choose such a low frequency right so if you're going to design a dc to dc converter it must be at a reasonably high frequency so i would choose say choose something like 10000 hertz 20000 hertz or even something higher all you have to do is decrease your time step accordingly right so now that we are here let me also decrease this to around 1 e raised to minus 7 right now since we have decreased this we can decrease our time steps accordingly right because we know that we have simulated our circuit so let me just make this 1 e raised to minus 8 and we can also edit these circuit simulation parameters the reason is because we have decreased our switching frequency we have decreased it by a factor of 10 and therefore we can decrease or rather also we can increase this by a factor of 10 right so before i continue let me just run the simulation make sure it runs we go to the command line make sure there is no error and let me come here and plot it right so its simulation is running i'll just run it once more i just want to make sure that i have a step waveform that is confirmation that we do have switching yes it is so this is where we had left off and the fact that we have these results so fast shows that this is the effect of decreasing the switching frequency and increasing the integration time step now my simulation is much faster right so this is just for the convenience of making these videos i would not recommend you to do the same if you're following along with the actual code if you're doing this on your own please do increase the switching frequency to something a little more practical right so now coming back to where we left off as i said what we have here is not a flyback converter right so what we have here is a dc voltage which is connected to the primary winding of a transformer through a switch right we then have a transformer a two a simple transformer now we can have any kind of winding ratio but here in this case I have chosen a winding ratio of 240 by 120. Again, this is not really practical. In order to arrive at a reasonable value, let's go back and check our circuit parameters. Most importantly, let me check my DC to DC voltage source. So my voltage source is 24 volts, right? If my voltage source is 24 volts, let me make this to be a 24 by 12 volt transformer, right? And this VA rating is not 10,000 amperes let's make it 100 instead right so this is you could say a typical power supply transformer something that could be used for charging a mobile phone or charge or any kind of basic charger right charging a simple appliance right? just a few amperes and maybe 12 volts or so so now that we have this what other changes we can make the rest are only calculated so we don't have to make any changes here Let me go back once more, as always, just to be on the safe side. Let's just run the simulation again. Whenever you make any changes, it's always best to run a simulation just to make sure that the changes do not break it. You never know what can break a simulation. So coming back to the circuit while it runs, this is a simple step down transformer. There's 24 volts in the primary, there's 12 volts on the secondary so which means it is we are stepping down a 24 volt let's say a battery to a 12 volt power supply right and maybe our eventual aim is to produce something like a 5 volt power supply or a 9 volt power supply or an 8 volt power supply whatever you want right that's something here so eventually on the secondary we have connected this resistor what we want here is a regulated source Okay, now let me go and run the simulation now 
we should have some results. Yes, we do and we have a nice switched waveform. So therefore, this simulation is working. Now, let's come over and have a look at this. Our V in is this voltage, right? Let me come over to the circuit to figure out what that is. That is this voltage here. Now, this voltage is being measured at the input, which means I am measuring a constant DC voltage, right? If I were to measure it here, I would get a switched voltage. Right? That's perfectly okay. Coming back to the waveform again, the output is turned on for 30% of the time. Right? Let's go over to our code and make sure what it is. You see here the modulation signal is 0.3, which means that we are turning on the switch only for 30% of the time period of every switching cycle. Right? Now, the rest of the time the switch is off. Now, if you were to look at what this is, this voltage output is directly being applied to the load, right? Now, this is not what we want. This load, if it is to be some kind of an appliance, it must reach, it must be supplied with a constant DC voltage. That DC voltage can be anything. It could be something like 5 volts, 8 volts, 9 volts, whatever we want. Doesn't really matter. Now, in that case, we need to create a regulated voltage. What we have here is a switched voltage, right? So you could say that we are back to where we started with this entire series. We are back to the concept of a DC to DC converter, right? We have a simple buck converter, right? Let me go and have a look at the buck converter. So if we go to the simulation of the buck converter, uh, this this is the buck converter. If I were to look at the topology, you see this is what it is. I have a voltage source in series with a switch. I am turning on, turning off the switch. So it can be exactly the same the way we are doing it right now, that is 30%. What we get here is a switched voltage. We want to feed a regulated voltage to the load, right? So we have used this topology. This is the topology of a buck converter. What we have said is we are going to connect an inductor so that when the switch is on, the inductor, the current through the inductor increases, energy is stored in the magnetic field of the inductor. When the switch is turned off, the energy in the inductor freewheels through the diode and continues to supply the output, right? So this is how it works. Now, you could argue that we could do exactly the same thing all over again. So we could connect exactly this part of the circuit to this one. Okay. We could connect exactly this part of the circuit here. Right? Because this is where we are getting our switched voltage. So all we have to do is connect it here. Right? That may seem like a very normal reaction. So let me just try that out. Actually, let us, for the sake of practice, let's actually copy it and see what happens, right? Again, it's important to note that this is not what is done, right? I'm just doing it because instead of just jumping to the flyback topology, I want to show you why we need that flyback topology specifically, right? So let me just copy this and put it in this, all right? Now here, let me create an insert. I'm just going to insert several columns. And let me put one jump here. And let me call this uh, buck filter. Uh, up one because this is up terminal one. Let me give it a better thing. Let me call this uh, term one. Let me say this is terminal one. Copy it here, place it here as well. And let's call this terminal two.
Let's place it here as well. I'll call it terminal 3. And here I'll call it terminal 4. So what I am going to do is I'm going to insert that filter into these particular terminals. So I just don't want to completely make this a very large simulation, which is why I'm trying to do this. So if I say this is my buck converter, if I were to copy this, I can always create a new a new circuit and just extend these wires all over again. Right? This is the simplest way to actually extend this circuit. So I'm just inserting this in between. Right? So let me just extend this as well. Actually, let me extend it a little more. Not that much. I can delete this last one. And let me connect another voltmeter here. And let me call this voltmeter filter. Okay, this is the output of the filter. Now, to be able to insert it, all I have to do is come out of the secondary secondary load and copy these jump labels. So I just come all the way to this part, delete it, place it here. And I just have to change this to 2. Change this to 3. And this to 3. Right? Or actually this is not 3. This is 4. So all I have done is I have brought the same buck filter, right? Or rather the same inductor and diode combination which I had in the buck converter and I've inserted it into this topology right because technically that's what we have we have a switched voltage and all I'm doing with the switch voltage is trying to bring in the same thing or rather the same effect which I had with the diode right or rather with the buck converter so let me just save this and this is in flyback and I will save it as a CSV file And let me call this buck filter. Okay. I will choose the defaults. These are okay. So let me go back to my simulation. Let me stop the simulation and go back to the main page and let me add this circuit. So make sure it's in flyback converter and come over to buck filter. Yes, buck filter, the very first one. and save this circuit, right? So the buck filter is now here. So just to be on the safe side, let me process it. And of course you must process it because we've added another circuit. Whenever you make a topological change, you must process circuit schematics, right? This will make sure that if there are any connection errors, they will show up. In this case, we don't have any. And it'll also create the default components of this converter. So let's go and change it. So most of this is fairly straightforward. Like this ammeter is just pointing downwards. Let me just quickly change it. So this is a typical buck converter. So I'm not really going into the details of it. Here again, this is correct because this ammeter D1 has to point upwards. So this can remain as it is. Ammeter L1 is pointing towards the left, which is wrong. It should point towards the right. So I'll just change this to F. The capacitor is only 10 microfarad. Let me change this to 500 microfarad. The positive polarity is towards 7L, which is perfectly okay. 
the diode is pointing upwards which is okay the voltage level can be increased to 1000 volts the inductor is 1 milli henry that can stay as it is the resistance is 100 ohms which is too large this is a parasitic resistance so it can be just 10 milli ohms and if we come all the way down we should have another resistor that is r1 this is also a parasitic resistor so this can be just point 0.1 because this is the parasitic resistance of the inductor and the last is the voltmeter this voltmeter can be 1000 volts and the polarity is 7n which is towards the which is upwards which is perfectly okay so i can just save it so i have now saved the parameters let me just export it so that i have the csv file if i need it and let me go back so we have now inserted okay so there is a slight problem this problem is the polarity has to be an element on the same branch so ammeter load this is because of the secondary load here the ammeter because we have inserted elements this component position has changed but the positive the direction has not changed so we just have to change this this can be 5k is the same column as the component the rest can be the same no changes and this time we are okay so let me run the simulation and let me go back main thing make sure there are no errors so here let me add another plot let me plot these are i will call this uh, i'll call this the output voltage right and here i'm going to plot the voltmeter load which is the secondary voltage so this is v sec i'll call this v sec and I will add the filter voltage, which is the output at the end of the filter, right? This I will call VO because this is what is actually fed to the load. And let's click on done. So let's plot this voltage. And let's go over and check what we have. Let's go back to the flyback converter. So this is our output voltage. All right, so now what do we have here? We have, now to make any sense out of this, I think we need to run it a little longer or we may, we have, we may have stability issues. It appears like we may have some stability issues because this is quite obviously some kind of a blowing up voltage. Okay, let's just decrease it once to be on the safe side. And let us also change time step here as well okay, let me just decrease everything make sure that the simulation is running and we can then go and plot it again if the error persists then we would have to debug it in the next section so you see the error now has stabilized right so it is quite obvious that this is no longer what we used to see before you see this is v secondary so v secondary now is a switched waveform so this is of course the result of switching right now v output is still zero right and this is something we would need to investigate so what exactly is happening here we have inserted a filter right 
but unfortunately the filter doesn't seem to be doing anything now this could be due to a variety of reasons as i said it could be because there is an error in the circuit connection it could be due to any reason right so this lecture is getting a little too long we will leave we will leave it at this point in the next lecture we will continue with this and try to find out what exactly is missing in the circuit it probably is a minor error it could be something wrong with either a polarity or it could be wrong with something else you never know we'll only find out in the next lecture so if you have any doubts about what i've discussed in this lecture feel free to post in the comments or send me an email or message me on social media whichever is your preference otherwise i will see you in the next week where we will continue and solve this problem most importantly it's important to know what i did is not what happens and this is not a flyback topology i'm trying to get gradually to the flyback topology but i'm trying to describe the need for that special flyback topology and why this kind of topology cannot be used when you have an isolating transform all right so once again thank you so much for watching and see you next time goodbye for now